I just like this. 9,000 gaming positions. Well, where did it go? 9,000 gaming positions in seven states. I mean, that's just, that's just, I mean, for it to not to be one of your normal casinos, that's a lot. All right, let's check them out. Uh, the, the dividend is, you know, it's a third of a percent. So it's more of a growth stock. Let's look at the growth. And we have it. I mean, we were breaking out a new highs, uh, all steam ahead before the scare of Corona. And then as this being a casino, more of, like it says right here, a brick and mortar casino, you would think like, uh, you know, we're on shutdown. You wouldn't be making a lot of money or at least it wouldn't be breaking out to brand new highs, but it is. Let's look at their profile and then we'll go in a little bit more of what they are and what they do. 74% owner institute or institutional ownership. Now let's check out why and how are they making money? And let's look right here. Most profitable online sports and horse race wagering platforms. Right. So I my I have a big question. I wonder if horse racing is considered gambling. Now I know, I know. You're like, well, that's a dumb question. However, how are they the number one most profitable in sports? Like horse racing makes perfect sense, right? Because that's what they do. Let's look at their well, they're not clickable. Twin Spire, it's going a little too fast. Online wagering. Online wagering is comprised of our advanced deposit wagering business, Twin Spires, the largest ADW platform in the United States, and our online sports betting and iGaming business, which consists of online bet America sports betting and casino gaming operations. Both businesses are headquartered in Louisville. Um... My question would be, what is the, the normal person allowed to gamble? I didn't know, I don't really look at Kentucky as being one of the gambling states. I mean, I know they have, they have Churchill Downs, which is now a, technically a casino. I mean, it, it plays its games. I'm not, I'm not sure if they have live tables. Um... Gaming. See, they got the machines. Uh, casino property. So did Ray Track, which supports casino. Okay. Casino license. Which I uh, regional gaming property. Ten properties located in eleven thousand slot machines. So they do have tables and a few of them, and four retail sports books. So Churchill Downs, let's look at all their properties. So Twin Spires and Bet America. Uh, we're, I'm not going to go into those right now because that's not what we're doing. And we're more or less in, we're looking more not that they're online real estate. All right, we're looking at their properties that are actually there. And we have two of them right here, Derby City Gaming, but that's not what we're looking at either. We're looking more at the properties, Churchill Downs. Uh, we got some in Green, Mississippi, Maryland, Ohio, Louisiana, Florida, Pennsylvania. So there's plenty of different uh, casinos that they own. The reason why that I, they're in here is because, because I don't know if you've ever been to one of these places, one of the casinos, they're extremely outside of vegas vegas is huge all right vegas is large but then vegas is also there's a whole bunch of them there and it's vegas real estate is pretty expensive now i wouldn't be surprised if the plains maine or the plains illinois let's just i wonder if they i just want to look at it.
See, it's, it's even temporary close, and they're they're ranking in the cash. Because you can play at home, right? There you go. That's how they're continuously doing it. Okay, here they have a sports book in Chicago. Um, so Illinois, yeah, I, so Illinois is legal. Uh... Rivers Casino, Rivers Casino. Does Churchill Down own all of them or just the River River Casino in the Plains? Uh, I'd have to, again, have to really look into this and see what's going on. That's not what this is for. Remember, this is just for stock and, and dividend. Got a little bit carried away. I apologize. All right. So... Oh, great. They had a stock split in 2019. So we will go, but they still pay the dividend. In 2020, uh, they a dividend of once a year. Okay, yeah. So once a year. Or it never, it, they could be paying, no, it's, it's, it's $2,013.87, cents. 2014 $1. Uh, yeah. So, yes, do they pay a dividend? Yes, they do. Do they pay it all the time? No, they do not. So, they pay it once a dividend once a year at $0.62 cents per share. Um, yeah. The last time they split looks like uh, in 1998. So uh, they're giving you a small a small split, um, not very much, and um, uh, the consistent. I mean, it's consistent. The frequency of it, I would have would have liked to see that a little bit more frequent than once once a year. But yeah, they say 62 cents and and that goes along with 62 cents payable January 6th, 2021. And but you had to have it on December 3rd. They declared it on October. Yeah, so they're in absolutely no hurry. They're not the, the fastest of people. Well, they declare it every October and then you have to own it. The ex dividend date right early November or late December. Excuse me. <laughs> late November, early December, and then they pay the beginning of the next year. I mean, it's that's just the way they've been doing it. So you can't say it's it's a new way. Well, a little bit different over here. They're a little bit uh, later, but still the same paying the of the pay the next year. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder if that has to do with taxes because you're not getting paid until the very next year. So uh, yeah, I wonder how they do that with taxes. It has to be some tax reason they're doing it because it doesn't make very much sense why you would do that. 